Hello, I'm Bob Orr, and this is Washington Unplugged. And today we're talking about the climate change bill slowly working its way through Congress. On Friday, it's expected the House will begin debate on a massive 1,200-page bill aimed at curbing emissions and also providing incentives for the development and the use of alternative energy sources. Today we're joined by Myron Ebell from the Competitive Enterprise Institute and also Jeremy Simons from the National Wildlife Federation. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Thank I know you, you have Thank two you. very different opinions here. Jeremy, we'll start with you. Why is this a good bill and why now? Well, this is a rare opportunity that we have to actually move forward and start building the clean energy economy. Uh, we're stuck in a rut in terms of how we use energy in our energy policy in the country. It feeds our dependency on oil, which hurts our economy, hurts my wallet and everyone's wallet. Uh, it hurts our energy security and it hurts our environment. So right now we have an opportunity to move forward with a plan that puts out clean energy incentives, energy efficiency, moves us forward to create millions of clean energy jobs, improve our energy security, and protect the environment that protects us and protects wildlife. You use the phrase, it hurts our wallet. Yeah. I think that probably uh, pricked up Myron's ears because from your perspective, this is an expensive tax. Yes, there's no good time for this bill. This bill is, uh, would be the biggest tax increase in the history of the world. It would destroy jobs, it would destroy economic activity, it would impoverish people, and I think it would eventually make America a second-rate economic power. A big well, tax because it would add cost to industry, that would be passed through. How, how exactly yes. is it a tax? Well, Bob, <coughs> cap and trade, which is the centerpiece of the Waxman-Markey bill, is, is an indirect tax. It's a sneaky, hidden tax. But what it would do would be to raise the price of energy. That would force people to use less energy and it would make kinds of energy that are now uncompetitive, that are too expensive, uh, marketable in the marketplace because the, the cheaper forms of energy like coal-fired electricity would become much more expensive. So this won't hurt places like California or New England too much because they've already raised the price of electricity and they've already dr driven out their manufacturing base. But places in the country that still have a lot of manufacturing jobs like the Midwest and the South and because they have coal-fired power, would be uh, hurt tremendously by this bill. This isn't really about less energy. This is about better energy and better energy choices. At the end of the day, um, you have to look. I mean, this is the same scare tactics we've been seeing from the oil industry and energy companies for years and years. We've been stuck in the same energy policy, and it hasn't done us any good when we go to the pump. Prices are going up again, and they're going to continue going up. In fact, you look at what the Department of Energy says. Department of Energy says that over the next five years, America's energy bill is going to go up by over $400 billion. Why? Because electric companies are raising electric rates because the price of coal goes up and because the price of oil keeps going up. This isn't an energy tax. What's taxing us is current energy prices. This is about having companies reduce pollution and invest in clean energy. Let me, let me ask, though, about the cost, because the Congressional Budget Office says this costs people about 50 cents a day. That's right. That doesn't seem like a lot. And it says by the year 2020, uh, the utility bills will be cut by 7 or 8%, something like that. But, but you still say, Myron, this is a, a, big, a big amount. Bob, I don't think those estimates pass the laugh test. I think you can get anything you want out of a model. The fact is that they are further down this road in the European Union than we are. For example, the green energy policies in the United Kingdom, in Britain, are now costing the average family $1,200 a year, and their greenhouse gas emissions haven't started to go down yet. That's just the beginning. I, you know, when this bill was in committee, the Republicans offered amendments. They said, let's suspend it if gasoline gets over $5 a gallon, if unemployment hits 15%, or if electricity prices double. Each one of those amendments was voted down because the people behind it want to say it's going to be free and easy to completely change the energy mix in this country. Well, is, but, there, is there an emissions bill you could support, though, or is this just a situation where business and old industry is just against any kind of change? Well, I don't represent old industry. I, I represent a, a public policy well, institute. Well, you have taken $2 million from ExxonMobil in the last you, decade. Your group is, has, has been, I think you dropped out, you were part of a coalition pushing this with Shell, BP, General Motors, DuPont, well, let Dow me, Chemical. You, you raised the issue. Let, you know, let me I tell mean, you why National Wildlife Federation and our four million members think this is the most important issue before Congress today. Because 20 to 30 percent of species in our children's lifetime will be on the brink of extinction from climate change if we don't act. Because our members actually go out and work too, and there can be 1.7 million jobs, clean energy jobs from this bill. This is an important bill. That's who we represent. I'm proud to do it. 
Will it create jobs or cost jobs? I mean, just short it, here. It will cost a huge number of jobs. It will create some jobs, but for every job it creates, it will destroy two or three or four. Um, can I, can I, I, can I address the 50 briefly. cent? Just sure. briefly on the 50 cents. Um, it, it will cost uh, 50 cents according to the Congressional Budget Office, but it will also save people money on energy because we're going to have tax incentives to weatherize home, new appliances, new building codes. It's an energy efficiency plan as well. EPA says when you factor that in, we could see a net energy savings on this. But importantly, even CBO says the lowest income families, quarter of families with lowest income in the country will see a net benefit, um, not a cost on this bill as well. And one it, last it, question, it, and we've got to wrap it up, and, it, and thank you for your patience here. What about the question, why now? I mean, we, we've got a financial problem. We're trying to get the economy stimulated again. Uh, they're trying to do health care reform. And now along comes a clean energy and a, and a great big bill on top of that. Why now, Myron? Does that bother you? Uh, I don't think there is a good time for this bill. I mean, I, I think, you know, President Obama disagrees with Jeremy. He said, under my cap and trade plan, electricity prices will necessarily skyrocket. His director of the Office of Management and Budget, when he testified before Congress, said, this will not work unless the price of energy goes up significantly. So I don't think there is a good time for this because I think it's a tremendous hurt on the economy for no, for little or no benefit. This is all pain and no gain. Well, why now, Jeremy? Why now? Well, fundamentally, there's no better time when the economy where it is, we need to create new jobs. 1.7 million clean energy jobs from this and from the stem stimulus, from building clean energy technologies. And when it comes down to it, we're fortunate to have leaders like President Obama and congressional leaders that have the leadership to go ahead and take on tough issues. It's a fundamental choice at the end of the day. Do we give in to the scare and fear of change? Or do we actually move forward with a new energy plan for America that creates jobs, helps our energy security, and protects the environment for our kids' future? In a long-running debate, I think we can see why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Consensus. Thanks to both of you thank for you. coming in today. Thank you. And thank you for watching Washington Unplugged on CBSNews.com. We'll see you tomorrow at 1230 with a conversation tomorrow on immigration. Have a good day. Thanks.